Well, welcome to the uh, August meeting of the Howitch Golf Committee. Um, we have present at the moment um, Mark Martello, a member of the committee, Karen Doucette, a member of the committee, and Jay Adams, a member of the committee, and I'm Paul White, chair of the committee. And I would like to begin uh, not only by calling us to order, but have us uh, engage in the Pledge of Allegiance. And I would ask you to remain standing following the Pledge of Allegiance for a moment. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, while we're standing, um, we all learned yesterday, sadly, of the passing of a long-term member of this Harwich Golf Committee, a, a very committed citizen who gave great service to this committee. She also is the immediate past chair of the Harwich Golf Committee. So I would like to have a moment of silence in memory and in honor of Martha Duffy. Thank you very much. First item on the uh, agenda is public comment or announcements. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to make any comments or comment on our agenda, which has been posted, but this is the time to come forward. Um, this is my first meeting chairing the meeting, uh, chairing the committee, and we are going to go by Robert's rules of order, and any member of the public is welcome to come forward. I would just simply ask that they identify themselves and uh, where their residence is in uh, Harwich, and we would ask them to, you know, make brief comments about whatever matter they wish to speak on. And it would be appreciated, given, you know, the narrow time that we have for our meeting, for them to limit it to three minutes if possible. Um, and we'll, we'll try to be uh, um, careful on that. But we certainly welcome any and all comments from the public. At this time, is there anyone who wishes to participate in our public comments? Seeing none, we will proceed to the consent agenda. And the first matter is the approval of the meeting minutes from July. And thank you, Jay, for organizing them and working um, um, uh, with our staff um, at uh, the Harwich Golf Course. Um, we very much appreciate the work that we get and the assistance that we get in preparing these minutes. And it, it's enormously helpful to us that Mike is available to assist us. Um, I hope that you've all had a chance to review the minutes. And it, are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? If there are none, all those in favor of acceptance of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. And the ayes have it, and uh, the minutes are accepted for July. Thank you very much. Now we'll move to the director's report. And we did uh, have an opportunity and very much appreciate Roman our director of golf, uh, Roman Greer, being present with us. Um, and um, at this point, we'll turn it over to you, Roman. And thank you for giving us uh, an advance uh, copy of the outline that you're going to follow. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, well, I want to start off by saying I missed this. I missed this opportunity to engage the public, put some stuff out in the public realm, and I look forward to working with the new deconstructed committee. So um, my outline starts with uh, the highlights of the 2024 uh, events of the golf course. It, it's a good rundown just of what's been happening at the golf course. So um, we start off on, on May 2nd with uh, SMGA event, which is named the TJ. That's in honor of uh, Tom Johnson, a former golf community member. And, uh, and he, held, he was instrumental in organizing this event for post 9-11 disabled vets. Uh, since Tom's passing, Tom Jr. comes every year. It's an honorary uh, guest of the event, and it's really good. This year we had 40 post-9-11 disabled vets uh, in uh, early season. I think that's their kickoff event of the year. They go all over New England, and they look forward to this event. They affectionately call it the TJ after Tom Johnson. Uh, then the following day, we had the Harwood Fire Association for 144 players in their Bobby J tournament. Uh, the first major of the year for us was Mass Golf. Chris Eaton Chapman Championship, where he had just under 200 players. Many of the best women players in the state played in that event. 
And I'd like to thank the efforts of our staff, main staff under the direction of Sean Fernandez. It, it's tough for them to have the course in championship condition that early in the season, and we really were there. So I appreciate Sean and his staff's efforts there. Uh, the operations staff under the direction of Dick Fagan, that was a challenging double shotgun event, which is not easy. The carts go out, and then the next wave's staged and ready, and they don't have carts yet. And uh, I'm going to rely on some words from Jen Morhan, the manager of women's events for Mass Golf. She sent a note the day after saying, I just want to say thank you. Yesterday's event went off without a hitch, thanks to the entire staff that made it possible. We got tremendous compliments on the facility, the course, and your attention to customer service did not go unnoticed. Everyone worked together so well, and the transition to the second shotgun was seamless. Thank you for all your efforts, hard work, and we're grateful to work with clubs like Cranberry Valley, and our players are fortunate to experience your golf course. Please be sure to pass on thanks to all involved, including food and beverage, cart crew, golf shop staff, and maintenance. So That's cool. That sums it up. I, it, was a, it was a great day to highlight the golf course. And everybody, they came from all the corners of the state and went back raving about Cranberry Valley, I'm sure. On, on May 23rd, we had the Harwich Police Association for 100 players in their annual benefit event. And then on May 30th, you tell May it was a busy month. On May 30th, we had the Cape Cod Women's Golf League for their annual event. Um, on 6-6, the Harwood Chamber of Commerce was rained out, and uh, we're rescheduling that for October. And you have then, a firm date on that? Yeah, uh, October 17th, and not, not that firm, I don't believe. I, I think we're going we're gonna, to uh, reconnoiter with the Chamber on that before we make it firm sure. and start announcing it. But, um, that's an annual event too, isn't it? Just recently, yeah. That oh. would be the second one, second annual. Yeah, I think we approved it a couple of years ago. That's yeah. right. Yes. And then this past weekend, we had one of our majors, the Cranberry Valley Club Championship. 78 competitors. I'd love to recognize Flora Marie Gaudet for, Gaudet for her 81. She shot 81-81 and won the women's championship. Not the defending champ, but a past champion. And same with Sam Russell, the men's champion. He shot 73-73. And again, not, not the defending champ, but, but he was a previous champ as well. And it shows that uh, consistency is important in golf. They both shot the same score both days. So, <laughs> so uh, shout out once again to our maintenance staff for presenting a championship golf course amid concerns of Hurricane Betty impacts. We met all week. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And Sean, Sean got the really, he got a hold of the golf course good and early in the week. He double cut and rolled it just in case he wasn't going to be able to. Uh, for the event, so uh, re really good coordination with staff there. It turned out that we had great conditions, got both rounds in as scheduled. Huh. That's great. And then our, our the major event on our calendar is the Mass Golf Mid-Am Championship. That's a state championship. That's the week of Labor Day. Starts just after Labor Day, the Tuesday and Thursday of that week. 120 golfers, um, plus or minus a few, are going to qualify for that event. We're in the process of qualifying right now. I believe Mark said he's working it as a volunteer and uh, for Mass Golf. 120. <laughs> yeah, 120. <laughs> I have a feeling. Oh, I know. And, and so, and. Wow. Yeah, it's so such a busy day. Tuesday and Wednesday, the golf course is going to be entirely closed for the event. Uh, they, um, and then on, thir on Thursday, the low 30 in ties or anyone within five strokes of the lead will play for the championship. So our golf course will reopen around 1030 that day. And we are still looking for volunteers. I, I put out the call for volunteers. I've gotten about eight or nine responses. Um, the volunteers will make the event the best it can be. And they're mostly scorers. We don't have anybody doing any of the heavy lifting. It'd be more like every three holes, they'd have a station and would post the scores. So, so um, please email me. And you know, my email address is on our Cranberry Valley website if interested in volunteering. Um, what, what was the timing of that, Roman? It's and that's the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Right, right after day. Labor Day. Yeah. yeah it's oh, for, for volunteers? Yeah. The, is it like what 6 I, in the morning? Early or? morning. Yeah. So we're doing two shifts, and I'm not sure yet. Uh, Mass Golf has a spreadsheet they're sending me yep. to assign actual shifts, but we're going to do an early shift and a late shift. I'm not sure exactly what the hours are. I think it would be 8 to noon and noon to 4, okay. right, right around there. And, uh, and, and you volunteers will receive a Mass Golf hat and lunch. Coming events are going to be uh, um, September 19th, the Golf Course Superintendents of Cape Cod. The uh, 10th of October is NOSA Hockey Benefit. And the 14th of October is the Mountain Way All Sports, All Sports Boosters. Rob, can I ask a quick question? Yes. How do you guys accommodate 
the hundred plus day player t days because like, when we do a tournament on the women's league, we do a maximum of like ninety six. Yeah, I mean, so really, uh, that that's good. The reason that you probably do that is for the quality of the event, yeah. And where with benefits, they they go for the amount of money they they can make. We cap it right around one forty four, but we recommend one twenty is the highest. Um, if it's a bad event we've had in the past, we will let them go a little bit higher. Like the Harvard Fire Association, they just happen to do a great job with their event. And you know, the more players, the more money they raise and they're fundraisers. Yeah. So uh, that's why I, I think your numbers are, are right on where they should be to have a fun event. Yeah, and not so worry so much about pace. Other, yeah. yeah. But but if we have an eight o'clock shotgun for 144 players, you know, we give them five hours the golf course, and then we really want them off the course in five hours. Wow. So, and more often than not, these are. These are not dedicated golfers. They're people that want to support the cause and then go in for lunch and they don't want to miss the lunch line. So, yeah. so you usually don't have a problem uh, <laughs> getting them in. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and then I want to highlight some of our junior programs because that's such a big part of what we do. Uh, first is the First Tee program that's administered by Mass Golf and the First Tee of Massachusetts. That's really our flagship program. Uh, our, our, um, Mass Golf created a First Tee chapter at Cranberry Valley in 2017. And it's really a great event. I'm sorry, a great program. In the fall and spring, uh, Monmoy Middle School, it's, it's, uh, it's for Monmoy Middle School students only, but the summer sessions are open to the public and they're sold out every year we've had it. It's a wonderful program that follows a national curriculum and is promoted as building game changers and empowering kids and teens through the game of golf. And that's really what they do. They, uh, they're, they're more interested in um, in developing young people and using golf as, as the way that they do it instead of developing good golfers. And it goes hand in hand, more often than not, they, they achieve both. Uh, you can't have a great program without great leaders, and I'd love to rec recognize Gordon Napier, who's the lead coach of our First Tee Chapter. When we first started our First Tee Chapter in 2017, Gordon was the band teacher at Middle Monroy Middle School. Since then, he's retired and taken on a lead coaching role in our, at, our, at our First Tee program. We're very fortunate that Gordon involved. He does a great job. And then not only that, he's, he's branched out now where he's helping all over the state win our, win our sessions. And wow. So he's, he's become, uh, they, they've invested in him with training and, and he's uh, really an asset to us. Uh, PGA Junior League is another event we hold. That's two days per week in late July. Our lead coach is our head pro, Dick Fagan. Um, and one, one thing that shows uh, just how popular that program is and how great of a job Dick does with it uh, we, we've, we've had three teams, uh, which is like a little over 30 kids every year we've had the program since 2015. And so we're in a league with Ocean's Edge and the Dennis Courses. That's a five-team league, three of them are Valley. So uh, I think that shows how much enthusiasm he's created there. That's a little league model where the kids have the numbered jerseys, team jerseys with the name of the team on the back. And basically, uh, instead of the way the first tee does it, um, that program attacks it from a different stage where we don't, they don't teach the kids any golf whatsoever. They put the shirt on, they stumble the team they're on, they give them clubs and say, go, go play a match. And the thought is the kids will want to get better at golf because they'll swing and miss a few times and, and they'll come back to the coach and say, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? And it really works. It's, that's the PGA's uh, number one program for junior development. Uh, we also hosted a annual events by the New England PGA Junior Tour on uh, on June 17th, on June 22nd of this year, this is another highlight on our calendar, is the Capes Only uh, Drive Chip and Puck Qualifier. We had 80 kids for that, and that's the, at the time, that was the third most attended uh, qualifier in all of New England. I don't know if you're involved, you know much about this, but that program, if you qualify, you go through stages, and you end up, the winners end up at Augusta National the week yeah. before the Masters. So um, a couple kids from the Cape have actually made it to the Masters. No, I don't believe anybody from our qualifying, but um, a couple of kids have. And, uh, I wanted to thank our volunteers uh, for that event. Brian DeRocher, Jan Doda, Sue Plinus, Craig Nickerson, John Bruno, and Ralph Ferrigno. It's funny, you may not have seen me reach out for volunteers for that event because we have that same core um, group of volunteers every year. All I have to do is send out the email and say, hey, are you in this again this year? Everyone responds yes. And then when they leave that day, they tell me, count on me for next year. And it's funny, I get the exact same thing from the New England PGA that runs the event, is they say, hey, can we get those same volunteers again? They're great. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. They're all that, trained. <laughs> they're, they're really good. Especially, I don't want to play favorites, 
Jan Doda and uh, Sue Plinus run the check-in table, and they, they all rave about the check-in ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, I'd love, love to thank them, and please don't stop volunteering. Let's see, on, uh, on July 9th, we had our annual Cape Cod Junior Golf Association event. And then for high schools, you know, uh, we have a lot of high school play. If you're ever at the golf course spring and fall in the afternoon, you, you really see the buzz of activity. Uh, we are the home course for both the varsity and junior varsity for the spring girls season and the fall boys, fall boys season. So uh, a, lot, a lot of afternoon golf, a lot of matches. And, uh, and, you know, it's funny, when we have all these programs developing the kids, the modern boy programs really become quite strong. The girls programs become quite strong, and so is the boys. Special events on uh, May 20th, we had the Cape Cod School Girls Championship. Uh, we hosted that one. We're, uh, it's an invitational by the uh, athletic directors of their schools. And then, uh, and then in the fall season on October 9th, we're going to be hosting the JV Cup, which is a great event because, you know, it seems like the JV kids never get any special yes. recognition, and it's a special day for them, yeah. a special day for the JV coaches. So it's become a very popular event. That's great. And that's what's going, what's been happening at Cranberry Valley. Any questions? From Not too busy, now? huh? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. That's, that's just some highlights. Wow. Believe me, every day we had an event just today. I say all the league stuff and everything. Oh, yeah. league stuff, yeah, I know. So we're busy. busy I would say. Yeah, In fact, I didn't know where I was going to mention it, but it's funny. I was reading recently that uh, 2023 in uh, nationally, was had the most rounds of golf in our country ever played, ever recorded for a year, and this year is up two percent. So this year, so last year was the busiest ever. This year is going to beat it. So nationally, so uh, yeah, golf's very healthy right now. Nice, a lot of participation. Um, and then I included the National Golf Foundation one page about municipal golf in the United States. I uh, just heard the discussion because you know I think it's, it's a good discussion point. For the committee, I, I think it's a special point for us because you know it's it's important to see what what municipal golf is all about. And on that sheet, it's, it tells you what the benefits are of municipal golf. Um, you know, it's not we're not a lesser private club. A municipal golf course is really a beautiful thing that it's about inclusion, access to all, um, because it's owned by the owned and operated by the town of Harwich. The town of Harwich residents do get, get reduced rates when they play it, whether it's through an annual pass, or through the daily greens fees, or cart fees. Um, but it's open to all, and uh, and the benefits. You'll see, I, I won't read through the one pager that I included, but I just thought that was good for discussion points for the committee. Um, the benefits in municipal golf, the history of it, what the municipal average green fee is. It's funny the range that they showed on that of less than fifty dollars, and is on the low end. Uh, high end is plus, is over eighty dollars. It's funny, that's right where we sit in that our residents, if they pay the resident rate, it's $50. So it's right on the low end and on the high end, we're at 85. So, so we're, you know, um, we're right at both ends of that. That's, I think we're in a pretty healthy position there. I included also a slide of the, our, um, the golf week ranking for Cranberry Valley. That, that was really exciting. That's one of the two biggest um, publications that rank golf courses, one of the two most respected. And really, well, along with Golf Digest, Golf Digest tends to be a little more elitist and focus on more of the private clubs. So um, I, I thought that was really good recognition for Cranberry Valley. It'll be in all of our upcoming promotional materials. And, um, and uh, that's more shout out to our staff for that. We're one of the first um, municipal courses. Yeah. I mean, the only one above us is George Wright in Boston. Absolutely, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And then we're only the second one listed on the Cape. Well, you know, the first one's Cape Cod National. Anybody in our area knows that's not really a public access golf course. You have to stay at the Wauquasa to play right. there. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I throw that one out and say we're number one on the Cape. <laughs> Either stay at Wauquasa or be born into the Lucky Jeans Club. <laughs> yeah. Public access, I don't know. I'm not surprised um, at those numbers. I mean, you, you mentioned the course is in great shape. You're getting good comments. I don't know about people around this table, but a number of people that I've talked to have been very impressed with the condition of the course this year. I know it's been conducive. It's been wet. And, you know, it's been a good summer in terms of, you know, natural irrigation. Yes. But nonetheless, um, the work of the staff has really produced an outstanding gem. I, th thanks for saying that, Paul. I totally agree. Um, you know, in the spring, we had a lot of rain. It's, it's funny. I was just remembering that 
our superintendent, Sean Fernandez, he told me on, on Mother's Day that he'd only turned on the irrigation system three times all year because it had rained so much. So every golf course is really green then. With the heat and humidity of the summer, that's where the challenge comes. And he's really been out ahead of it. So, so a lot of courses in the spring and early summer, all courses were really in good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Sherbert's yard was. Um, but uh, the spring, uh, the, the sun midsummer rain and heat and humidity has uh, really been challenging. And so I, I think they've been really on top of things with their spray applications, their preventative maintenance. So thank you for saying so, Paul. I, I totally agree. I think they do a great job. And year in and year out, um, whatever the challenges are, they're really up to them. Um, I, I, I'm sorry if I skipped some things. I, I think uh, I also included uh, some rounds data. I don't know if you guys had any really uh, comments on those necessarily. Um, you know, so that's the round data really for the busiest 18 old golf course on the Cape, which we are, have been every single year. Or it's, it's, you'll see that pre pandemic, we were very steady, right at 39,000 rounds or so. After the pandemic, we've been pretty steady, right around 44,000, which is a lot of rounds in a, in a seasonal area like ours. So um, very busy. You'll see the trends there, and you can you can pick them out on that sheet right there where the pandemic was. Where I mean, in um, 2020 July, that's that was right a high when, watermark, that's right? That's right when the state went to level three <laughs> restrictions, which allowed us to go to 10 minute tee time intervals, and in fact, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, wow, we're still recovering from that. <laughs> but, um, but then you'll, you, you can also pick out where the tornado was. I think the tornado in 2019 was in July. Yeah, that yeah. was a low July. So yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the course got hammered. Oh, it did. Yeah, then we shut down. It, yeah. it was a shame. We had a um, we had a mass golf championship. I think the junior championship, the junior am or the junior girls am that we had to cancel, and uh, the Ridge Club picked it up in our in our place because we just we couldn't we could we yeah. weren't safe enough to have it. Oh, we had so many with the gully, you know, the widow makers, the branches that are up in the trees that are disconnected and with stiff breezing can come down. So we were close for a good 10 or 12 days just to, just to, just to be able to provide a safe golf course. And there it is. It's in, it shows in the numbers, right? It shows in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And the next page is uh, where I sent you some annual past data as well. And uh, uh, you'll see the one thing I see on that that was really kind of expected and it was intended, I hope to say reduction in annual passes sold was, um, we're down well, like 60 or so annual passes this year over last year, which was a high watermark. That was really, that, that's, uh, we, we kind of saw that coming by um, introducing the resident rate. And so yeah. by introducing a resident rate pays you go, we were hoping to reduce that number. As a result, we were down there, but our green fee numbers are, are um, all time high. So. So I think we, we traded annual passes for that resident rate's great. I mean, yeah. I, I I'm a member, but I, I just think it's great. Oh yeah, I, I think it is too. I mean, it's it's great when it's great in the spring when people are kind of making a decision. Do you should I take out the annual pass? If you're only going to play ten times, they basically if you look at twenty times, you'll yeah. just over break even. Mm -hmm. And less than twenty times, it's it's, it's worth it pays you go. And then that's more of a municipal model nationally. Hey, so you go model um, with a reduced rate for residents. Is, is there an explanation of how that reduced rate works? I mean, is it is it just if you have a primary residence here, if you have a second home here? It, no, it, it's, it's, it, it follows the exact residency restrictions of our annual passes. We just have to show your residency, show a utility bill, show a auto registration or a tax bill and anything like that but we but you'd have to show it each time you checked in so mm -hmm. we encourage people to put it in the golf bag they'll even laminate it or keep it in an envelope and, okay. and the people that are doing it are the people mm -hmm. want to receive that radar because uh the, the golfers required to show their residency each time okay and that's exactly the same thing as you know if you play one of the tory pines or something like that one of the really big municipal golf courses you know, you'd have to show your san diego driver's license or and if you don't have it on you, you're paying the full rate. Okay, got it. Any questions about any of that data? Did we retain many um, Chatham and Orleans and East Ham people? Yes, very strong. I mean, really, really, really strong from that from that uh, category. 
um, you know, because we did remove those two categories, it's all in the non-resident category now. And um, it's, it, the numbers are reducing a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, so we were at the high, high water mark for non-resident annual passes sold to probably. So they were all under the non-resident now. 325 yep. Three, or so, yeah. yeah. Now they're all under the non-resident. So, yeah, yeah, we've retained most of them. Most of them. Yeah. And then, you know, um, as I mentioned, I, I think next month's meeting, I'll do like a preview of, uh, of a rate, what I'm thinking for the rates and fee recommendation for this year. So I'll just, I'll just preview that based on trends. And uh, at the October meeting is where I'll present a, um, a formal recommendation. And will that be the public uh, discussion as, as well? In October, yes, sir. I believe so. Right, so we'll, we'll post a public hearing. Right. Thank you. And one last thing. So last week we had our, um, it used to be a biannual, we kind of skipped a few years based on the pandemic, but uh, USGA agronomy consultation. And uh, but th that's very helpful for Sean Fernandez and, and Rob Donovan, our, our other super golf course superintendent. Um, the agronomist comes from the USGA, he covers the entire northeast region of the country, and uh, he travels around. It's, it's very helpful because he sees so many things going to all the other golf courses. And it's really a fun discussion to, to, um, to look in on from the outside where, where they're really, it's a bunch of superintendents talking shop and, you know, what products are working, yeah. um, what they're seeing for grasses that work. And so uh, I'll, I'll post it and I'll send a link to the committee. I'll send it through you, Paul. Um, when, when he produces his report, he'll produce his report by September 1st. Yeah. Um, but I was interested in a few things they, they brought up. One is a global, you know, and just, just a casual observation, for observation that I had was um, they, uh, he recommended that he, he or, I'm sorry, the USGA agronomist said he may recommend uh, Cranberry Valley to be a test site to uh, test out um, Bermuda grass on our driving range tee, because, which we've never had before because Bermuda grass is really a warm weather grass, but, it, but it's such an easier grass to maintain if it gets the right conditions where you know, right, right now we have to close our range tee a few times a year and really maintain it and aerate it and top seed it. Bermuda grass would fill right in, and the, the divots fill right in. I don't know if you're playing any golf in Florida, but that, that's what they have everywhere in Florida. It would be much more helpful for staff much more helpful for people to play golf, the divots would fill in a lot quicker. And so he may include that in his report, his recommendation to be a test site for that. And if any questions come, well, what's the cost for us or anything? I'm not, I'm not exactly a preliminary discussion. <laughs> I just yeah. found that very interesting. And that's the kind of discussion that happens at that half, it was a half day consultation. It's more durable, apparently. It's much more durable. Yeah. It fills in, the divots fill in, I mean, according to him, they fill in in two days. Oh. It's much faster than what we're seeing now. That's great. Yeah. So, and we've had that in the past. We've had that recommended in the past that we maybe put a different type of grass in the front of our range tee so that, and so that um, maybe more of a warm weather grass up there. I've never heard of Bermuda grass being recommended for our area. So apparently, the scientists and agronomists with USGA think that uh, global warming is having that effect. Where, yeah. where um, they could, the, the southern warm weather grasses are, are all of a sudden viable you now. It's, it's growing in my yard and expanding, so I think it'll do just fine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a test site right there. <laughs> that sounds good. That's all I have for report, Paul. Anybody uh, on the committee have any comments or questions uh, regarding the director of golf's report? Anything you want to pursue? I, I had, um, he had already answered the question, and he's like okay. mind reading, apparently. So, uh, he's good that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was curious how the membership had affected uh, mem membership versus the fifty dollars, and you explained that. So thank you. Yeah, and I, I do anticipate that going forward, as the word gets out about that a little bit more, as people evaluate, geez, I didn't play as much golf as I mm -hmm. wanted to this year. Maybe I'd be better off paying as I go. The resident rate. I think we'll see maybe more of that utilized in the future. But um, yeah. But um, well, like I said, we're we're, we're down annual passes sold, but we're up to an all-time high in, in green street revenue. So. You can see where we're just, you know, these people, they, they transfer categories. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. Okay. I guess we're all set. Great. Wonderful, Roman. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great report. And Thanks. it's been a while since we've been together, so it's good to get a sense of what's been happening at the course and how busy everyone's been. And, um, you know, please let the entire staff know um, 
not only the superintendents, but also all the others, how good they've made this year for everybody. And uh, um, we take notice and do appreciate it. Yeah, it's well, uh, something to be very proud of. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> um, if there's nothing further with Roman, we can proceed now to new business. And last month, I know um, we had some discussions about a regular meeting date. And apparently, the charter committee um, has kind of reserved that second Tuesday of the month, which was the date that I think we were focused on. We've traditionally, I think, met on the second Tuesday. Um, and I think UJ may have brought up, I'm not sure, maybe doing it from five to seven as opposed to four to six, which we used to do, which I think is fine if the, that's what folks want to do. But we're kind of blocked uh, if, if the charter committee is going to meet on a regular basis. I did notice that the third Tuesday of the month is available in September, October, and November, if we are comfortable with shifting to that. I don't know how people feel, whether it makes any difference. For whatever reason, the second Tuesday was sort of the date. Uh, I put a tentative hold on the third Tuesday for September, since I saw that the Charter Commission um, had reserved the small room. Um, and if folks feel strongly about it, you know, we'll, we'll think about other options. But I just thought at least, you know. Mr. Chairman, uh, the, uh, the third Tuesday was when, when the golf community always met. Okay. It was always the third Tuesday. So I think by trying to meet on the second Tuesday, you crashed into some other meetings that okay. were traditionally there. Okay. I think the reason you found a sweet spot on the third Tuesday is that's when the golf community always met. Okay. Right. Is, how do people feel about that? Generally speaking, I don't mind it, but because it wasn't on there already, I already we have an annual meeting with our league on that day. On that particular on day, the seventeenth is, which okay. I think is the third Tuesday of September. And is that an evening meeting? Yeah, it's four to six. Okay. All right. Um. We could let's see. We do that Wednesday or something, just as an off day this one time. Uh, let me check and see about availability <coughs> after. When I can, when I can double check. Um, all right. If we, do you think going forward we could do the third? Yeah, generally I'm fine. Tuesday. As as all right. So after September we could do the third Tuesday. And let's see if maybe the, the 18th yeah. is that the date that would be better for you? For me, it would be. I don't know about other people. How do folks feel about that? If we just for so once. You're talking about September 18th. September. If it's available, I've got to go down and check. Um, Normally, it'd be fine with me, but all right. I know I won't be. <laughs> is, that, is that a Tuesday or is that a Wednesday? That's the what we the Wednesday in September and October. The third Tuesday is the fifteenth. Just want to take a quick look at my own. <laughs> yeah, I won't be in town that day. Which day, the eighteenth? Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, keep it on the 17th if you have a quorum. I just can't make it. 18th doesn't work? No, no, I'm out of town that day, but. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, you out of town, too? I'm out of town. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we may have to, uh, we may have to stick with that. Um, yeah, All right, but then going forward for October, we're okay. Um, yeah. If we do that mm -hmm. third, mm -hmm. yep. that would be the 15th of October. And uh, in November, it would be the 19th. Open as of this moment. Okay. We're going to keep it at 4 o'clock, Paul. Yeah. Well, do you want to keep it at 4? You prefer? It's fine. I think. Jay, I thought Jay had said well, five, five to seven, I, maybe. I had indicated five, but if I can, if it's once a month, then I can plan it at four o'clock. All problem. right, okay. What time does your meeting start? Yours starts at four, doesn't uh, it? It starts at four. Okay. Yeah, and I'm the interim president, so I have to go. All right. <laughs> All right, so can we say tentatively um, October 15th, four to, four to six, and November? 19th, 4 to 6. Okay. And then we'll, we'll take a look 
beyond that. I will get a little more sporadic once the holidays arrive, probably. Uh, there's no need to gild the lily here. Um, okay, if there's absent any concern, we will stick with, um, with Tuesday the 18th from 4 to 6 in September, Tuesday the 15th, 4 to 6, and Tuesday the 19th of November, 4 to 6. September's the 17th, not Tuesday. I'm sorry. That's okay. 17th? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's September. Yeah, yeah. 17th, yeah. I wrote the 18th because that's what we were thinking of. Okay. Absent any concern with that, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it and we will confirm those dates and uh, get our notices out and get our agenda in and posted appropriately. Nice. Um, any other new business discussions on topics for the next meeting? Is there anything in particular? We already know we're going to probably have a preliminary discussion on rates and fees uh, along with other updates and uh, Aaron, I think you had raised a couple of questions which I shared with, with Roman and we can kind of get into that, the whole issue of irrigation and... Yeah, yeah. do you want me to re review them now just really I, quick? I, th I think we brought, are you sufficiently aware? I think I gave you a copy of some of her ideas for yeah. discussion. Yeah, do, would you like to discuss now? Or uh, you want to put it on the agenda for next month? Whatever. Really, there's not really a whole I lot think to say. Okay. Uh, what, what I would say about um, yeah, the, the capital plan, what's on, what, what's on it, the golf course has two items currently on the capital plan, FY15, which we're in right now, a irrigation upgrade, and FY29, um, a, uh, bunker rebuilding. And right in, uh, for, as far as um, the project goes, it was not presented to town meeting as part of the Cat Town's capital plan, but, but as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, I submitted it as part of the capital plan. It's up to the powers to be above me um, to include it in town meeting yeah. or to include it. And so, created, so it was not brought forward at town meeting this year. There may be a special fall town meeting. There may be next year. I, I have submitted it um, for my side, for my as a yeah. capital submission. And so. that's, are we doing a special town meeting that we know of, Jeff? We don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. And, and, then, I, and then I, I do know, and we don't have to discuss all these now, Roman. Honestly, we can bring them to the next meeting. Is that... I think we're getting into the we're going to start planning again for another annual meeting unbelievably but I know that the capital at least draft capital plans will be due in the early fall to and stuff like that so whenever you have them if we could look at them if something else gets added because there's other things that I'm sure need to get on them if they you know, it's a matter of funding and stuff yeah. projections but what if we can see that at some point no big sure. deal sure if, if when I meet with um, the chairman about um, next meeting's agenda I'll ask to put a capital on yep. item on there for discussion. The only other thing that I think I wanted to get to in another meeting, it doesn't have to be now, would be there's been some pace of play discussion concerns, not uh, across the board, whether it be in the league or out of the league. This year, a lot of things have come up, and I'm wondering if we can discuss at some later point the idea of putting on the table Rangers again, because it's and we don't have, again, I, I'm not asking you to address that now, yeah. but. No, I mean, I, I, we, we can put that in the future. I, I will address it now, just generally. So our, our pace play program on our, um, that works for our GPS system, our staff have shown that um, pace play's never been better right now. And we have reallocated our staffing resources in other directions away from rangering. So we do more of an electronic rangering now. I did see your comments on that. About, about walkers and identifying yeah, them. Yeah. You know, we, we have, we've actually um, developed a pretty good plan for that where when every car goes, say, say if you take car number 30 and you're the first golf, golfer of the day, we actually label that car with your name on it and what time, what tee time you played. So we can see that, that you're, that uh, do sets in car number 30 at six o'clock and then we can see, you know, it's not like there's an hour worth of walkers between you more often than not, there's, a, there's maybe one or two tee times. Then we can see where the 630 card is and we can kind of anticipate where the carts are in the middle. I know, I know that we, it was a hot topic, I guess, two weeks ago, because I know the league had a very slow round or a slow group in general. Yeah, there was one, yeah. In general, so I mentioned that we had a meeting uh, amongst staff just recently. Our, our feeling is 
pace plays ever been better at the golf course. It's, it's really been, it's been strong. Obviously, it only takes one group to slow you down, but we've never been better at reacting to it. And the reacting to it on the uh, on the GPS program is a lot faster than the old fashioned guy driving around the golf course. So, so this goes directly to the problem. Yeah, we go directly to the problem. One of our professional yeah. staff just hop in the car, drive right out to it, and we know exactly what the situation is, where all the groups are. So, so I get that now you can, with the GPS, even if they're scattered with walkers in between, you can, be, you can look at how they're doing and sort of make some judgments yeah, about what's happening. Yeah, you see where the 6 o'clock group is and then you see where the 6.30 group is. You, you, can, you know the 6.10 and 6.20 group are right in the middle there. Yeah. And it is pretty easy to um, okay. analyze. All right, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have anything else uh, that folks want to bring up at this point? I'm sure as we move along and get more familiar with some of the you know major aspects of the plans for the course going forward, we'll we'll continue to uh, ask these questions and and, and raise various issues uh, for the benefit of all. Um, if not, um, yes, Mark, please. Do we have any uh, update on that short course or the? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. That, that's still an open procurement, and then not really. So so. The one thing I would say about that is um, we're pursuing grants. The, the, the uh, design is not completed yet because um, I, I don't want to go out on a limb and then just get, do any guesswork there. It's an open procurement. The design itself is almost done, but as part of the procurement, the architect has to present, um, be with us to present to um, like con the Towns Conservation Commission and such. And I'm, not, I'm kind of, I've been talking to uh, the town administrator about a timetable for that. Because if they do get the conservation approval, that's only good for two years. As I just mentioned, it's not even on our capital plan yet because that was always going to be reliant on grant money. Yeah. Now, we have had a commitment from a major um, golf course developer. Uh, they gave us a verbal commitment that they, they would like to give to the, for that project. Uh, but one requirement they have is, is um, that we would have a 501c3 that they could, they could then donate money through. Um, so it's all still in the works. There's not really a whole lot to uh, to announce on that one. The one thing I will tell you is uh, we do have an opportunity with, to have our architect, Richard Mandel, come up and pr do maybe a presentation of his final design with the golf committee um, when he's near the end of that procurement. But but like I said, that's not quite finished yet because the town administrator's kind of, he's trying to decide what's the best timetable. We don't want to get the approvals now when we know it's not even on our capital plan yet and have those time then have those approvals expire. So he may, as part of the procurement, he may change the requirement from presenting and getting the approval um, to presenting to a more informal board possibly and getting an approval on the general concept and then coming back at a later day. So that's all still up in the air. After that two years, is there an extension or do you have to do the two years? There's not. So, um, so, uh, so one idea that the town administrator was considering was uh, uh, possibly having him do more of an informal um, presentation to our community development um, committee, which is you know health department, conservation, all, all, all the most all the important ones that, that would have good comments to say. And if it, the idea is if it passed through that, then it would pass through conservation, and then the permitting it would need. So uh, that's that's all being considered right now. So long, long answer, but no, uh, th that's not complete yet. Mm. But I do anticipate that at some point uh, he'll come up. He's in, he's based in North Carolina. That he'll come up and do a presentation, whether it's at the golf community level or the select board level, of his uh, of his design. Is that adjacent to the existing yes. board? Yeah. So uh, the so he's, that included two different designs. One was for an expanded putting complex, and that would be a wraparound of the clubhouse, like where, where the porch is right now on the clubhouse, that would wrap around there and, and um, incorporate into our existing uh, putting green. So that, that'd be more of a home for our first tee program where they can meet you know, certain days of the week. And then, uh, and then the short course would be a nine hole par three course in the wooded area between holes 14 and 18. It's a very exciting concept, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's got so many wonderful possibilities, but um, I, I, I don't have anything to present yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's an open procurement, officially. It's <laughs> big. Yeah. I know you mentioned, um, you know, the bunker rebuilding is 
a little bit down the line. But yes. then, I'm sure there are intermediate repairs being made to the bunkers that, that, that's what, that and, and folks would want to know about. People panicked a little bit that uh, it's not on there until FY29, but, but it's, it's our superintendent says, hey, we do annually and it's every year. So that, that would really be, the, the big rebuild would be uh, hiring an architect to, to um, decide if the shape of the bunker is still exactly what it should be, or if maybe we should change a little bit of the shaping of the bunkers. Yeah. But more than that, it's it's like, you know, anyway, it's funny, the golf course has seen the, the frayed um, layer. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 was, that was a trend in golf and right around the 2000s. It doesn't, it doesn't work very well for municipal golf courses that, that's, that don't hand rake the bunkers. We don't hand rake. We send a machine and the machine catches the liner and pulls it up. Yeah. And so, and basically, and it's not all a current Valley problem. Anybody that redid their bunkers in that time period, they all are having this right now. So um, it'll address that, the drainage of the bunker. And it, it's funny, we were just discussing this with the agronomist from the USGA the other day, that they've gone completely back to a very um, old-fashioned fix with those where, where, they, where you dig out the bunker and then you place a layer of sod in it. And then you put the sand on top and the sod just dies and now you've just got an organic layer in there that's organically filtering the material through and away. So uh, he's, saying, he's seeing the best success with that. I know Sean Fernandez has been um, on that idea for a while. So in FY29, we'll plan to rebuild the bunkers and have an architect involved. But we do the annual maintenance. Just like this year, we had a lot, a lot of sand. I couldn't tell you the exact amount. But if you played in the spring, you saw a big pile of sand in the in the parking lot every time you came in down by the maintenance area. Yeah. And then we, we had a couple deliveries of sand. We put them all right in the bunkers. He did a lot of edging. He'll continue to do that right up until, up right up until we do the rebuild. Yeah. Thank you. Do any members have any other questions or comments? If not, I would accept a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Seconded. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it and the meeting is adjourned.